It's pretty safe to say that the Beatles are the most important and influential band in the history of music. They influenced generations of musicians across a plethora of countries and genres, and their legacy will continue for years to come. In this video, I'll be focusing on some of my favourite cover versions of Beatles songs. I realise that a lot of these are from Abbey Road. This wasn't a conscious decision, but it's no coincidence that it is my favourite Beatles album. The tracks are ordered alphabetically and not by preference. Number one on the list is Elliot Smith's cover of Because. Elliot Smith was a guitarist and singer-songwriter who released records through the 90s and noughties. He was known for his distinct vocal style and melancholy tone of both lyrics and music. He was also a very big Beatles fan. The Beatles track Because always struck me as a very unsettling, eerie, even creepy song. Its melodic quality, the timbre of the vocal harmonies, and the opening harpsichord are all very ethereal, but also slightly unnerving. And one thing Smith does really well with his version is capture this same feeling. The big thing to discuss here I think are the layered vocal harmonies. In the Beatles version there's a three-part harmony sung by McCartney, Lennon and Harrison which were recorded three separate times creating nine voices in all. Smith similarly uses layered vocal harmonies but chooses to start the song without instrumentation giving the vocal center stage. Because the world is round it turns me Great track, a great cover, and a nice case study overall because I think if you listen to Elliot Smith's discography, you can hear the Beatles' influence throughout. Gladys Knight and the Pips were a family musical act from Atlanta, Georgia who found commercial success in the 60s. They produced some of the most recognizable R&B and soul tracks of that period and have received a bounty of honors and awards to show for it. Of all the covers discussed in this video, I would say this is one of the most faithful in terms of structure and arrangements. The Beatles' original version stylistically lends itself really well to the 70s soulful R&B aesthetic that Gladys Knight and the Pips became known for. By having the cover version be a few BPM faster, it makes the track as a whole more danceable and groovy without sounding wildly different to the original. An iconic original and a fantastic cover would certainly recommend if you haven't already heard it. The Yellow Magic Orchestra were a Japanese electronic band from the 70s and 80s who were very influential and innovative in the field of popular electronic music. The group was made up of recognizable names in the Japanese music scene at the time like Haromi Hosono, Yukihiro Takahashi and Ryuchi Sakamoto. On their sophomore release Solid State Survivor, they cover the Beatles' Day Tripper, reimagining the pop rock hit as a synthy electronic dream. The melodies are the same as are the lyrics, but they're encased in a beautifully programmed glitchy sound that made YMO so popular in the 70s. If you haven't checked out YMO, this is a great place to start. Eddie Hazel is best known as the virtuoso lead guitarist for Parliament Funkadelic. He released his one and only solo album in 1977, Game, Dames and Kitar Thangs. The album's style is very much in keeping with Parliament Funkadelic, but a little more spaced out and psychedelic. The fourth track is a cover of the Beatles' I Want You, She's So Heavy. For me, Eddie Hazel is a truly exceptional guitarist. Superlative soloing ability, recognizable guitar tone, and appreciation of groove and space are what make him stand out. His interpretation of one of my favorite Beatles tracks unsurprisingly gives his guitar a lot of space to solo. You can hear throughout the first sections, one of the ways Hazel's arrangement of the track differs to Lennon and McCartney's is the decision to omit the arpeggio guitar motif that's heard right at the beginning of the Beatles version, a motif the band choose to vamp when it comes to the climactic ending. Hazel instead chooses to play chords of the same root notes. In a typically funk tradition, this tweak to the composition means Means it's less intricate and leaves more space to create a groove. Towards the end of the track, this space is filled up by Hazel's rip-roaring soloing and the increasingly intense drums. If 
If you're a fan of the Beatles version, I would highly recommend checking this cover out because it's able to creatively reinterpret it without straying too far from the original. John Denver is an iconic figure for the singer-songwriter movement of the 70s and helped popularize acoustic folk music. His best-known track, Take Me Home Country Roads, was released on his fourth studio album, Poems, Prayers and Promises. On this same album, we find his cover of Let It Be, one of the best ballads credited to the Lennon-McCartney partnership. The Beatles version begins with McCartney singing and playing piano before more instruments are slowly added and the song's tapestry becomes more full. Denver's version is comparatively very sparse. The piano is replaced with an acoustic guitar and there isn't much more instrumentation added other than what sounds like some guitar and bass overdubs towards the end. The same emotive tenderness that is felt in the beginning of the Beatles version that comes just from a voice and instrument is maintained throughout Denver's version. One of the biggest pioneers of R&B, pop, soul, gospel and funk, Stevie Wonder is a musical juggernaut. He's one of the best-selling artists of all time, won 25 Grammys, inducted into multiple halls of fame and put together an astounding body of work. On his 12th studio album, Signed, Sealed, Delivered, you can find his cover of the Beatles' We Can Work It Out. An incredible cover, in my opinion, one of the few that could arguably be as good as or even better than the original. Wonder applies his trademark soulful energy and joy into the track, along with the classic backing vocals and harmonica. This is a glowing example of a heavyweight artist having the confidence to cover a Beatles track and absolutely nailing it. Think of what you're saying You can get it wrong and still you think that it's alright Think of what you're saying You can get it wrong and still think that it's alright there you have it. These are my favorite Beatles covers. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your favorites are. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.